Hey guys, this is uh, dot point S10, Sustainability 10. Uh, we're describing farming and agricultural practices that have affected water quality and quantity. So the quality and the amount as well. Um, the eight things we're going to look at are fertilizer usage, uh, effect of stock on water quality and quantity, um, effluent, so um, feces from animals uh, and urine as well, uh, chemicals that are sprayed in there, grass waterways, uh, riparian zones, uh, dam construction and irrigation methods. So um, this, this is an including dot point, um, which means that all of these things could be asked for by a name in the exam. So you need to know about each of these eight things. Um, they could be asked for by name. Um, so this to start with is a good video um, to look at just on water quality. So have a, have a quick look of that before um, you go any further. Um, fertilizer usage, which is number one. So the effect of fertilizer usage on water quality and quantity. So fertilizer can be applied in a number of different ways, um, via liquid or via more pellets, um, etc. And um, that can be put onto crops. And of course, that can make its way into um, waterways. So this video here is a short YouTube video about um, fertilizer usage in Los Angeles. And it shows um, the effect of what happens when um, fertilizer gets into waterways and um, the effect on people's drinking water uh, and polluting a source of drinking water. So that's a good one to watch as well. Um, so uh, fertilizers that are used in large amounts and end up getting into waterways, in particular are nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, and when they get into waterways, they can cause things uh, or problems and eutrophication is the word you want to remember here. Um, excessive nutrients into water causes um, things like plant life to die and animals like fish etc that are in the um, waterway to die at because of a lack of oxygen that's caused and you get um, algal bloom in the waterway of course this can happen from fertilizer or can also happen from animal waste which we'll talk about shortly um, but the nitrates particularly leaching from the soil from fertilizer into waterways can cause um, blue green algal bloom so you get algae growing on the surface of the waterway and that can cause loss of, loss of fish um, and any other aquatic life in the water body. So the quality is gonna deteriorate in the water. Um, and obviously nitrogen fertilizer is expensive as well, so you don't wanna be losing it um, there. Strategies, a solution here is to um, use crop rotation and use legumes to fix nitrogen. Um, it's natural, it's not synthetic fertilizer. Um, it's gonna reduce the amount of runoff into waterways as well. Uh, so there's a couple of other methods there to have a look at as well. The effect of stock. Um, so we've seen um, on excursion examples of um, fencing off creek beds um, at Ross Thompson's place, but uh, we need to have a look here at um, animals getting down to the creek bed and kind of this is this is not a um, example where there's much erosion that you can see, but um, the potential for animals to get close to water and actually um, erode the creek bank um, that will lead to poorer quality water because you have um, the soil um, breaking down and going into the creek bed. Um, here's another photo of um, a creek bed where there's obviously been animals accessing it and so you're going to get this water here is going to be much poorer quality because it's going to have um, soil uh, mixed in it. It's going to be turbid, which just means there's a lot of um, particles of soil in the water. Um, so the quality is decreased because of this. You're going to lose soil here as well, and all the nutrients, etc., in the soil are going to be in the waterway. Um, so the problem is that yeah, livestock and their hard hooves are causing erosion into the water. Obviously, the solution there's an easy one: um, fencing it off. We've seen that happen, and it's very successful. So it's an easy solution there. And here we can see a fence. And that's it for that one. Effluent management. So this is an example of a kind of concentrated area where there's animals around. Um, this, in this case, a feed or sorry, a, a water trough. Um, this might happen in a feedlot situation where there's a lot of animals in a small area, and there's obviously effluent, so uh, feces and urine um, piled up in a certain area or congregates um, uh, in a more concentrated fashion than if they were out just grazing pasture. And so what you do with that can affect the quality of streams and waterways nearby. Um, you have to do a good job of treating it and handling it so that you don't diminish the quality of streams nearby. This is an example of a poor um, use of or poor handling of the, of the situation. You don't want it to look like this. This can easily run off into nearby creeks and um, really 
cause a lowering in, quant in quality of the nearby stream. And like we said a minute ago, eutrophication because there's a large amount of nutrient in that feces and urine. Um, so yeah, you have um, nutrient rich pollutants in this case and it causes um, flora and fauna to die. And the solution is really um, managing the waste well. So if you're in a feedlot, maybe having a treatment area that can um, look after it properly. Um, so an example here down the left of the photo, we can see where the runoff from um, a feedlot might be into a concrete settling area. And the, um, it'll, this allows the water to settle for a while. The um, more solid parts and heavier parts fall to the bottom and the, the water at the top will be clear and you can pump the water away. Um, and that's a good way of um, managing the water and stopping the nutrient and the feces and urine getting into the creek. Um, chemical use. Obviously, farmers use a lot of chemical um, uh, at times, and um, that can be pesticides and herbicides and insecticides, all these different things that can potentially get into waterways um, through rain and runoff, etc. Uh, here's an example of that happening. Um, the problem is that when those chemicals um, go into the creek bed they can last quite a while in the water and they can go to other properties and um, kill things on other properties they can kill um, vegetation on the creek bank which can lead to erosion um, so it's a big problem using chemicals on farms and you have to be careful with when you spray and how far how close it is to waterways because it can obviously decrease the quality of the water way nearby a solution is to choose ones that um, that won't will break down and won't um, enter waterways um, is a one solution and also um, using them at the right um, time and the right and making sure you don't spray them close to um, areas that have waterways nearby. Um, grass waterways, this is a good YouTube video showing you an example of um, wherever there's water um, having grass along that waterway and right at the creek banks obviously that's going to um, slow down erosion. You can see here this is a grass waterway. Um, the water's flowing through and it's there's quite a large amount, almost 100% ground cover um, right along the creek bank, which is obviously going to slow the water down and it's also going to um, prevent erosion because you have roots there holding, um, holding the soil together. And so that's obviously going to increase the quality of the water. So, And this is an example of a bare waterway and you can imagine the erosion that's going to be occurring here. Again, we've seen um, things like this on Ross Thompson's property um, and how effective it is. Um, gully erosion is the thing that's going to occur um, because of water causing that to happen if you don't have a grass waterway. So really, um, grass waterways and making sure you have a good amount of grass cover um, next to creek areas and waterways is important to reduce the erosion there. And here's an example of probably flood waters, I'd say. You can see that it's moving quite quick down here, but it's probably slower than it would be otherwise if it, if it was more bare and there was less, um, less grass here. It would be probably a lot dirtier than it already is. Um, so the water quality would be a lot lower if there was no grass there. Riparian waterways, this is the same as grass waterways, except riparian means trees. So um, we're talking here about trees by, right next to waterways. And obviously trees are deep rooted here we see trees right next to the waterway trees are deep rooted and they're going to hold the soil together they're going to prevent erosion to keep the creek banks um, steady and stable and stop uh, stop erosion there into the creek bed so having riparian waterways or trees next to the waterways is going to improve the quality of your soil because of less erosion um, and so it's important that farmers fence this off like we said before but also plant trees here um, and planting native species is important. And here we see um, willow is a particularly good one um, for because of their roots to, um, to hold the creek bed together. Um, although there are some downsides to willow which you can read about. Um, so having buffer zones along next to waterways is important and, and filling them with grass as we saw before and trees is gonna help improve the quality of water um, and, for whatever use it may be used for. Here's an example of a um, kind of creek that's been, or a waterway that's been, um, had rocks here to prevent erosion, but you can also see down the left-hand side that they have um, planted some trees so that the roots of those trees will hold the soil together and prevent erosion in that area and improve the water flow down here. It's also gonna slow the water flow down. Um, the second last one is dam construction. So dams um, change the way that waterways operate. Dams cause um, a buildup of water 
and that water tends to be colder because it doesn't it's not um, it doesn't have as large a surface area and it's quite deep so it tends to cause the water to be cold and it obviously stops water from um, getting further downstream as much as it used to before the dam was there which means there's a, a lower quantity um, and the quality it's usually clearer once it comes out but it's also colder which can mean um, bad things for insect well for animals and um, things that drink it, uh, fish that live in it, they don't like the water colder than it's, they're used to um, before the dam existed. So um, here's an example of a wetland without a dam, um, quite a natural situation where the whole the, the water can flow across the whole landscape and be available to all this area, which is obviously good for the ecosystem. Um, but if you have a dam, then this is likely to be reduced or cut off. And so those things are just not going to thrive. You're not going to have as much plant life, probably not as much bird life either. So it's going to, dams do change the downstream quality and quantity of water. There's a lot less water and um, it changes the quality. It's colder um, and clearer. So um, you can kind of see that here as well. Um, and the solution obviously is to follow government regulations about dams and maybe consider where you're building a dam and what the downstream effects of that might be. The last one is irrigation methods. So clearly, um, We've talked about this previously, but um, if you're using a lot of water, especially if it's being pumped from bores, um, that can cause uh, significant amounts of salinity. So the more and more water you use, um, the more and more chance you have of rising the water table or raising the water table and increasing salinity. So an example is flood irrigation. Obviously, there's a lot of water on the surface and that's going to increase the amount of salinity um, on in that area um, more quickly than otherwise. And obviously you're gonna lose a lot of water here as well because there's a large surface area, it's very shallow and you'll lose a lot to evaporation. Another example that's probably a little bit less wasteful um, than flood irrigation is pivot irrigation. You're just spraying a large amount of water all over the, um, the crop that you are um, irrigating. And again, this is still gonna increase salinity, maybe not as much as flood irrigation. It's still gonna potentially lead to increased water table. Um, and so salinity is becoming an increasing problem and we need to um, pay attention to that and, and become more efficient at what we do. So the solution really I think here is to use less water, of course, less irrigation, but um, that doesn't mean um, less per plant necessarily, but being more targeted and being more efficient with um, getting water onto plants. And of course the way of doing that is drip irrigation, um, where you put a drop of water um, at the plant's um, base that where it's required and not wasting water on um, areas in between plants. So this is gonna um, save water. It's gonna be much more efficient. It's gonna lead to a lot less water getting through to the ground table, to the groundwater table, um, which means that the water table won't rise as quickly um, or hopefully at all. And that will lead to less salinity. So drip irrigation saves water, increases the water quality ultimately because it's decreasing salinity or the risk of salinity and um, increasing the quantity that you have left because you're not using as much. Um, so this is just an explanation of eutrophication um, which we had earlier. So in terms of uh, the HSC, um, you're going to get asked um, potentially about these. It's usually asked in a short answer question. Um, it's not, I haven't really seen it before in a, in a multiple choice, but it might be asked in a two, three, four, five mark question.